Hello everyone, right, I'm Tijni and uh, as you know I have completed the X 2010 challenge on gold beating Sebastian Vettel. Um, many people have said it's impossible but obviously it's not. Um, main reason is because of the pad lag which is where you, if you were turning right then left quite fast, you, uh, especially the S's as, a, as an example as you'll see uh, soon. Um, you'll turn right, so I'm going right on the 4th S for example, and then I want to go into the 5th S left. Uh, if you did that, just went right then left, you wouldn't be able to do it, uh, the car wouldn't react fast enough and you'd crash. So I would then turn right, as I'm still in the turn, straighten the stick and then turn left and then that compensates for the, uh, the pad lag. Um, I'm using L2 and R2's brake and accelerate on the pad and uh, my pad also has Geotech real triggers on which are like two pounds for a packet and uh, they're well worth um, the money because they stop you getting finger pain as much because you're not pressing in as, as far uh, but it is doable without because uh, I'm just as fast as I've tried it um, my driving gates for this car are, are the driving line on uh, skid recovery force on and ABS on one with everything else being off and it's automatic gears as well. Right, so uh, what we'll do is uh, you will begin by uh, leaving the pits and then you want to head towards the left hand side of the track. Now as you'll see here, you want to take a wider line and then you want to brake here or about here, you'll see it on the driving line, it's right at the end of the driving line and then you want to come on the inside and hit the apex as much as possible and use the exit curb as much of it as possible but don't go wide off it um, this is because as soon as you exit you want to come straight across to the right side of the track to set you up for the S's as you'll see here I come down to second gear and then back up to and then here you go you, as you come into the, the first S you don't let go or you let go very slightly as you can see I've let go very slightly so I'm still on about 90% acceleration and you want to come to the far left hand side of the track and then this is going to be your first breaking point in the S's so as we watch now as you see here I'm still accelerating but I'm going to break now this is so I can come to the far right hand side of the track to set me up better for the the next uh, the, the the third S which is a left and you're going to fully accelerate through that but as we're on this corner you'll see me break in a moment and then be on the foot as far right as possible of the track. So here we go, we're going into the, the left now. Now I've let go slightly but you'll notice with a car that if, unlike a, all the other cars where you don't want to stop, start accelerating, you want to do that with this uh, at points in the, on the track because it jolts the car more in that direction and then that will get you uh, around the corner a lot better. Uh, as you see here, I go around here flat out pretty much, and then we're at this point. Now, as you can see, I, I, I'm braking and accelerating here. This is the use of the L2R2, and uh, when you brake here, you want the car to jolt. Now, the jolt will force you right, and that's what you want because you want to be as far out as possible for the next corner and flat out through the, the last S bend, so you get as much speed as possible because it's a long acceleration period. It's where you're going to make up some time. So as you see here, I'm only in the centre there, but that's <clears throat> but that as you as you saw there, that's where the uh, the straighten of the car hap happens. Uh, let me just rewind that slightly. Right, so about there, you'll see how wide I am, but I'm I, I would have started straightening up on the pad about, sorry this is very hard on this program um, about there I would have started coming, maybe just a bit after that and that way I'm, I'm already prepared for the next corner you see so we'll just carry on with that uh, that's your first reference point you want, to, after the curb, it you want to be under the 21 second margin then under 22, then under 23, now I'm not there unfortunately but on my faster laps, uh, faster sectors, I am under them, and uh, that's what you're aiming for. 
Now here, you can take this corner out of a flat out, or you break. Now I break. Uh, obviously flat out's a bit faster, but you're having to mentally prepare yourself a lot quicker as well for the corner after. Whereas if you break, you can position a bit better, you can then get the right line as, as you'll see in the next corner. This is the next corner is the hardest corner on the track. If we get past this corner, quite fine. Right now here, you have two two ways to do this: a Scandinavian flick, or using the dirt. Now, are you? If I'm in the middle of the track and I've taken the line a bit wrong, I'll try and Scandinavian flick it or crash spectacularly. But on this, on these two runs, you'll notice that I use the dirt. Now, as you'll see, I've, my wheels come onto the kerb, and it's only my left wheels. And you don't want the full wheels beyond, but you want a bit of the wheels beyond. It's like losing the grip and then the car catches itself. Now, you, the fastest I've ever done the Apex is 170, but you're looking for 130, 140 for a fairly good time. 170 was a one-off, and I've done 160 a fair few times, 150 a fair few times more, and then obviously 130 to 140 is mo mostly all the time. So, um... As you'll see now, the car is going to flick. Skid recovery force to help you cat, uh, catch the car, and downforce of the car itself will catch the car as well. If you watch this, that. Like now the thing with the exit curb there, dark green is very bad on Suzuka, and light green is very good. So if you go four wheels on the dark green, dark green curb, sorry about that, um, you will fail, get disqualified. So you have to be aware of that. Now the first set is about to come up here as you can see on the map down there um, you're aiming for 29.1 and under now my fastest is a 28.4 or 3 I can't remember can't remember at all but that was perfect test is perfect two right handers back there and perfect first corner and that is so hard to do on a pad that pff, you're talking one in 2000 probably <laughs> one in one thousand or something like that but yeah 29 one and under you're on a fairly good lap you keep going just keep focused um but so we're going to be approaching the hairpin next and uh yeah let's have a look so here you got the the kind of i call it i won't really call it corner because it's well you can because it's got a curve but you know what i mean now there's two ways to take this hairpin you want the car to slide you want the back end to come out so you get round quicker now it's a Scandinavian flick, now how drastic you do it. Now normally I go very wide and I keep turning right after the corner obviously and then turn left. That brings the back end round and I get around the hairpin better. Or if you're to the right already, you could just go left, right, left. Now because you're uh, being a bit slower and you're braking at the same time, the car should react that uh, should react in time with that. So as you can see. The Scandinavian flick has flicked the back end. You can probably see that on on it. Now you want now I, I've stopped it in a very good place here. You this is where you want to start accelerating. You'll notice the two is just changing to a one on the gear ratio. Now if it's a two and you're exiting in second gear, you'll lose so much time. It's three temps. If you're in first gear, the acceleration's a lot better and it'll be um you you'll you'll keep the time. You might even gain time. And um I don't know how the automatic gear works prop like properly because I've been in 60 mile an hour and been in second, been in 70 mile an hour and been in first. So you know it's it's I'm not sure of that system. So obviously someone out there might understand it a lot more and uh, comment below, I suppose. <laughs> um, but yeah, you'll notice here now that I'm going to accelerate as soon as look, straight away. First, accelerate. I know I'm going to make the corner now, and I'm going to have a lot of speed coming out of it. You can try and use as much of the curb as possible, but yeah, that's what you're aiming for. Now another time reference point there. End of the curb. I'm under 35. I'm on a re I'm on a really good lap now. That's another time reference point, and then this is the one. Now this corner, you'll notice on the driving line as well. It it forces you really to the right, and this is what you want to do and then you want to break and you want to come through the corner at 200 mile an hour. I've done it at 210 but that was a one off. So 200 mile an hour, fourth gear and then you're ready for the next part of the spoon corner. Now as you see here I mess up slightly. I'm only doing 180. You'll notice on the lap after I'll be doing 200. 
You did 200 on the first half because I've done it many times. But this is the line you want to take. I took it a bit. I took it a bit short there, and you know, I had two wheels on the grass. You don't want that. You want to go wide, come in, and you want to be 200 mile an hour. Now this next one is a, a second gear corner or third gear. Sometimes you can stay in third, but that gearing doesn't really matter. And uh, once you see the exit curb of this corner, you want to absolutely nail it. Now you can let go and keep going, but you might lose a tenth. But a tenth sometimes is worth it if you're going to if you're on a really good lap and you know you're really going to get a good time. So look, go. Here's your two reference points. So this is under 50, and the next one's under 51. The Panasonic, and uh, I can't read the one after, but the yellow one. So, right, so I'm on a 53 here, right? So this tells me now that I'm on a 1.6 or 159. Depending on, like, if I do the chicane well, that's what I'm on. If I don't do the chicane well, it's going to be a 162 or a 163. Just from that, from all these times, you can work it out. As you do more attempts, you'll like you you, you kind of click on whether what time you're on without even going through sectors and stuff. So now I have to nail the chicane well to be on for a lap that would st it's still possible to get gold, but it's going to be harder, and I need a very good second lap. 